Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com, where I do what I think is fun, mostly. This is my 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's my daily driver. I purchased it about 15 years ago for cash, and I, I really like to keep it running well. It treats me well as long as I treat it well. Well, the other day it wouldn't start at all. Just went to turn it on and just clearly no spark. Um, no fuel, no spark, no something. Uh, immediately I figured, well, maybe there's a code because usually computers get kind of cranky in a vehicle, even in these ODB1 ODB um, vehicles, they still throw codes. And so I pull out my reader, which does um, onboard diagnostics one or two, and uh, of course this Jeep is one. I plug it into the computer, which in a 94 Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's the plug-in for the computer is right up here at the firewall inside the uh, inside the engine compartment, right beside the PCM, the uh, the power control module. There's a there's a, a connector down there that this hooks into. And as soon as I pulled it in, it said, "Well, you have a code. You have one code, and it was code 54. And 54 means cam sensor pickup problem. That means the computer doesn't know where the cam is." Um, in the vehicle, so it doesn't know when to uh, do the fuel injection. This is a fuel injected, port fuel injected uh, vehicle. Um, so, okay, well, that only leads to pretty much one thing and that's in this vehicle, there's a Hall effect sensor inside the distributor, which senses this hooks up to the cam at the bottom of the distributor. Yeah, this is still a distributor vehicle, um, it is that era. Uh, and inside the distributor, there's a Hall effect, a magnetic pickup coil, if you will, that senses where this where this is at on the cam. And that tells the computer you know, where everything's at rotation-wise so that it can fire the fuel injectors and so forth and other engine controls. Maybe this video shouldn't be called replacing a distributor in a 94 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It should probably be called Will It Blend? <laughs> because the inside of this did quite blend. <laughs> um, it's not easy to get to these distributors on these uh, Cherokees because it's way back in here underneath the firewall and there's actually an overhang on the firewall so you really have, it's really back there and down, almost like a van body. Well, yeah. So you either, uh, to get the distributor off, you have to get the cap off back there and there's Phillips screws that hold the cap on and so what I did, you either get a small screwdriver or I built this little jig out of uh, some socket set and there's a Phillips on there and that can get down in there and that can unscrew this. So the first thing I did is I marked all my um, where all the cables went to the cylinders. Uh, the cylinders are marked on this uh, intake manifold, the cylinders are marked or you can get out a book and it will show you what cylinders are what. Um, in, in which case you really don't need to mark anything because the, the cylinders are, are numbered on the, on the intake manifold and in the book and they tell you which ones to go to here. So I just, just to make it easy to assemble, I take a, a marker and I mark where all the cylinders go um, on the distributor before I pull everything off. Then you get back in there and you unscrew this and then this, this, rotor, this uh, distributor cap will come off. It, it, you're going to have to replace all this in this scenario, but if you, if you didn't have to replace the distributor body, then the cap is, that's how you get the cap off. Then there's a rotor, this spins and basically distributes the spark. This uh, is the uh, Hall effect sensor, this cam sensor if you will. So then you got to pull off your, your rotor that distributes the spark as it rotates. And then inside, this is the money shot for this problem. When I went and took off this sensor, there's just pieces inside. It's just all Will it blend? <laughs> it just chewed itself to pieces. And what there really is is there's a there's a magnet in here. That's a little magnet. And it's supposed to sit inside a bracket right there. It's supposed to be a part of that mechanism. And then this half crescent piece of steel spins around. It's supposed to be attached to this crank here. And, and that spins around and then makes and breaks the magnetic sensor here. And that's, uh, that's the signal that the computer's looking for. Of course, this one's all just blended. It's a, it's a, it's a complete 
It's a complete mess. Um, this is what a, a good one looks like. This is a, a spare one that I had laying around. Uh, I had replaced, uh, um, that's the magnet in there, and, and that's where the, the metal passes between those two and makes and breaks the signal for this cord. I, can't, I keep spare parts that I know are good. When I, I rebuilt the engine on this thing several years ago and I replaced all those components just to make sure they were all new. Um, and in this case it, it failed. So it caused a lot of damage. Uh, but I had a spare. I was going to put it on but I can't, you can't fix this inside of this. this. This is destroyed. So this, you just basically go to your dealer or you go to an auto parts store and you order a new distributor. And it comes in a box, the whole thing. So let's just take a look at what it was I had to do to kind of get to it. And then uh, I'm going to show how to set your top dead center, which is really kind of a, a concern I have, is OEM ones will actually have a label on them. Right there it says top dead center, or that is number cylinder number one. So you basically just assemble it and you make sure that this is facing, you make sure those are lined up this lines up with number one cylinder and this is there when your crank is at number one cylinder top dead center that's how you align these uh, these more electrical mechanical ones up unfortunately they don't put that label on anymore um, the replacement ones don't have the label and so you have to transfer the mark off of a one that's good or you have to do it you have to do it in some other way you have to pointed at number one cylinder which is a bit funny thing to do. It's much easier when the when this uh, Hall effect sensor pickup cam sensor is marked. If this is marked you just turn this to your, to the two line up and you're done. Uh, provided your engine's at top dead center cylinder number one. Okay I'm going to show a few things that have to be removed for this distributor to get access to it. So I take off the throttle, the, the, the throttle body here just four bolts and this comes off. Of course the air intake has to come off too. Um, there's some cables for your uh, for your transmission and for your throttle and for your cruise control. Take all those cables off and move them aside. There's, uh, there's some electrical wires that have to disconnect, get them off to the side. There's a few uh, uh, hard, essentially brittle hoses that go around to the intake manifold. Carefully take those off so you don't break them and then remove them. And there's only a few. You want to get those out of here so that you have access back here. Then then you you look at the markings like here it says four and here it says two. You look at these markings and you figure out which cylinder numbers they are or you look in your manual. And then you route these uh, all of your spark plug wires back to your distributor and then you mark both the cable and the distributor head for easy disassembly and reassembly um, so that you don't have to go and reverse understand it with, by the book. Then you can take off all your spark plug cables, and when those spark plug cables are off, that's when you can um, take the little, either a little screwdriver, or in my case, I rigged up a little wrench socket thing to take off the distributor head. Then you unplug the wire for the hall pickup sensor, which will be plugged in back here, and then your cap and your rotor and your hall effect sensor can come out. If that's all you have to do, you can just reverse that process put all that back on and you're done but in my case I have to take out the distributor. The distributor is way back in here and you can tilt it and, and it'll tilt and go in and out but before you can get it out there's a clamp that holds it down. There's this clamp metal thing. It goes on here and it it clamps down and holds this thing from rotating because that this, this whole mechanism can rotate um, in its housing and so this half inch set our bolt has to be loosened and completely taken out so that you can pull your distributor up and out of there. Uh, if you have a small enough wrench and you can get your hands back in there you can get a half inch wrench you can get a half inch wrench on that and it'll come off but there are distributor they do make wrenches for distributors they look like this it's a bent thing it's usually half inch whatever yours happens to be and it basically can get underneath here as you notice this is bent and comes underneath where that bolt will be and then you don't have to get a wrench back in that firewall which is really really difficult so you buy one of these wrenches and then this just goes in there unfortunately because of the firewall being here this 
can't fit back in here the way they the way they purchased them. It, it actually will hit this firewall top. So what I did is I cut the top of the wrench off. And once the top was cut off, I used my grinder and I made a uh, sort of a star pattern on it that that fit a uh, 3 8 inch uh, wrench. And so now I have a custom tool, uh, a distributor wrench with a ground top for a 3 8 inch wrench. And then that way I can just drop it down in here and then I got access to that wrench handle. As soon as that clamp is, down, is off, then this just pulls straight up out of there. And this is the box with the, uh, with the new full distributor in it. And so there's a new one with the sensor cable already ready to go. So I'm going to transfer the numbers um, from this to this so that I have my cable numbering so it's just easy for me. I don't have to look anything up. We're going to want to put a little grease on this O-ring here, a little, uh, a little bit of motor oil on this O-ring because that's going to seal. This is a, an oiled area gallery down here. Um, when it goes in, we're going to have the cap already off so that we can set the we can set the motor to top dead center cylinder one and we can set the rotor to the right position. So this is the new one with the cap. This is the rotor and this pickup sensor does have a mark. It was showing the camera right there. There's a little notch right there. An OEM one would actually say number one cylinder in the plastic but this one doesn't. But you just have to know that notch means that that's number one cylinder. And this rotates freely in there so you just want to make sure this is lined up with this when this is already in top dead center num cylinder number one. Uh, so I'll put it in as is because everything's already, I already know it goes in like this. I made sure I, I kept track that this rotor was pointing back that way when I took out and I haven't turned the engine since then so I know everything is still in that position. So I'll, I'll make sure that this, inter this, this connector interface, will I'll make sure this drops in so it's pointed back and not pointed that way because it could go either way. You just want to make sure it's pointing in the same gen same general direction when these when this in interfaces and locks inside the motor because nothing's been turned. This will point back that way, and then from there, once this is all connected and slightly tightened down, but still I can still rotate this. I can still rotate this body independently, but if this is already in there and fairly tight, and then then I will turn the engine manually until top dead center, and that will turn this like this. And then when this engine I know is at top dead center, then I just have to rotate this so that this lines up, those, those two marks line up. And then I can clamp this down tight and the computer does the rest. And you also have only about a partial rotation of this, which means if you put it in 360, 180 out of sync, you're not going to be able to turn it back around where it needs to be. Uh, so you just have to, for this vehicle, which is the 5.2 liter engine for the Jeep Grand Cherokee. The, uh, this particular V8, you take the, the sensor, the Hall Effect sensor wire, and make sure it's facing back toward the firewall. That way you have enough rotation in the right beginning position. <clears throat> okay, you just gotta feel around with your hands until you get everything down just right making sure you kept the rotation correct. Now I'll, I'll put, in the, uh, put in the distributor hold down clamp and I'll tighten it up only to the point where I can still turn it a little bit if I want to. You really can't see back in here. It's good to clean everything up before you even start this job so that you don't have dirt and grease and oil back in there. You don't want anything dropping down in your motor. So I did get back in there with a rag and first I air hose to blow as much off as I could back there and then I got in there with a rag and wiped everything off so there would be no dirt or grease dropping down into the motor when you take the distributor out and that way it's cleaner back here when it's time to put it back together. Okay just finger tight and everything's good now I can turn it just a little. So there is a mark here if it had no mark you want to mark it now um, really you gotta <laughs> if it's not marked you're kind of you're gonna have to put your distributor on there and try and transfer the mark this distributor cap but at any rate most of them are marked I'm gonna highlight mine with a a marker just so that it's easier to see back in there so I can see where that rotor cap has to point when I'm on top dead center 
um, cylinder number one of the compression stroke. So we'll put this in now and plug it in. So the sensor, Hall Effect sensor is in. Now I'll put the rotor cap in, make sure it truly is pointing back like it was when I took it out. So I know I didn't mess that up. So now we got to get uh, cylinder number one, which is this cylinder up here, the driver's side front on this engine. The cylinder number one has to be in the compression stroke, which means I take off the spark plug and I start rotating the engine. Now that this is on, this will rotate. It's partially clamped. The distributor will rotate with the cam and with the engine. I can uh, take off the spark plug over here, start rotating the engine until I feel compression stroke coming up on cylinder number one. When I do that, then I know I'm in the compression stroke for this motor. Then I continue rotating the engine until I get the top dead center marking down underneath the, uh, on the uh, harmonic balancer. There's timing marks on the front of the engine down here. Um, and then I make sure those timing marks on the harmonic balancer sh line up with the top dead center mark um, on, on the engine block then I know that my engine is truly top dead center on the compression stroke cylinder number one. Okay, five inch so five eighths inch socket um, on after taking out the spark plug cable we'll take that off. Once you get it loose and you stick a hose in there and when you get a hose over top of your spark plug you can rotate it out easier. In there. That's how you get it out and put it in. I always put a little anti-seize um, compound on these before I put them back in, uh, just so that they uh, don't mess up the threads or lock in too bad. Spark plug's looking pretty good too. So now I gotta hold my finger over that while I rotate the engine and I'll feel the compression stroke coming around. But because I'm working alone, um, rather than trying to hold my finger in there and turn the engine, I'm gonna get out my compression sensor. Um, it's easier to get it down in there as well, and then I can just watch the gauge while I turn the engine so they can get the uh, compression stroke easier working alone. Here, I'll just put this someplace where I can see it. So I have a one and a quarter inch socket with a small extension, half inch. Breaker bar, nice long extension. Another wrench, just a uh, ratchet just in case I can get it in there, but this is probably the mechanism. I'll just get in there and I'll start putting this on the on the harmonic balancer uh, hold down nut that's in the front of the engine block and then just start turning the whole motor from underneath and then I can watch the compression needle so there's a shot of the wrench on the harmonic balancer hold down nut on the front crank of the engine and this is what I'll turn the engine over with. Okay there's the top dead center mark on my harmonic balancer. I've highlighted it with a marker. We have to turn that around until it lines up with there's the TDC mark. It has to line up with that mark on the on the engine block. When those two lines mark up at compression stroke then we have it in the proper position to set our cam or to set our rotor cap. Well, what are we trying to do? Line up a couple of marks between... There we go. If you can slide underneath there a little bit and look at the camera lens. Whoops, you need to have the light up there still though. If you... You see the that line on that wheel? Yeah. And the nut marks on the metal that says TDC? Yes. Those two have to line up when it's doing that compression. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. That looks centered. We're good. So I got this number one spark plug back in. The engine's perfectly set to top dead center compression stroke. Uh, now we have to line up the, uh, we have to turn the, dis the distributor body so that that mark on that coil pickup lines up with the direction that the rotor cap is pointing. The rotor well, for, for the most part, you're just gonna have to trust me because I can't get my camera back in here. You're just gonna have to trust me that that's, uh, that I'm gonna be able to line those two up. Okay, now without moving the distributor at all, I have to tighten that down. And it's, tighten that distributor down now. Critical that it doesn't move while you do this. And that's why it's good to have some sort of a little tool like this. 
so that you can uh, do it. Well, it's time to put the distributor cap on. I transferred the numbers for the plugs, which match the numbers that I put on the uh, spark plug cables. You don't really have to do this if you don't want to. Technically, the firing order is printed right here in the actual uh, intake manifold here. And so it tells you the firing order, which, and this cap always comes with one, one of these marked as number one. And the firing order just goes around just as it does with these printed numbers here. And then over here on the side, right above each one, also on the intake manifold, is those printed numbers. So you know, you know the count of the number order. But this just, you know, it's just easier to put all the numbers on and, and then just plug the wires in. You don't have to think so much about it. Um, I will put a little bit of dielectric grease. This is this uh, Permatex dielectric grease. I like to put a little bit on with my finger and just wipe it on each one just so I have a, a nice, a good uh, dielectric seal. Um, it keeps these from corroding and becoming issues. Um, and I do that with my spark plug uh, tips too. I just rub it around. And then uh, I got this little rig up with the Phillips on it and a little wrench. That way I can get a I can get underneath there, underneath this uh, overhang and, and, and bolt this down easy. So we've got the uh, spark plug cables all hooked up, routed, nicely mounted so they can't dangle or touch anything hot. Uh, we got uh, the intake manifold on, all the wires plugged in, the throttle, the throttle cables in, cruise control, the, the TP cable. Everything's hooked up except for the intake. We'll put on the uh, intake uh, breather and filter and we're ready for a test. Everything's back together, everything should be properly set. Um, we'll go ahead and give it a start up now to test it out. Uh, because everything's put back in its original position, it should just start up and idle fine. But sometimes with these vehicles, um, when you just monkey around with them a little bit like that, they, you have to drive them around for a little while so they kind of relearn what's going on. Um, shouldn't happen really too much because I pretty much got everything exactly the way it is. But uh, time for the big test. I'll just set you back so you can see your start and run, I guess. Thank you.